And welcome back, part four in the Lee Dovetail Jig series. Today we're making those sliding dovetails. That sounds interesting. Stick around. In the last episode, we finally got those box joints where we wanted them to be in terms of fit and quality. Bit controversial around the use of the e-bush, so go back and look at the comments in those videos, see what people think. But today, we're going to move forward and do those internal partitions. So here's our rough sketch again, and here's those partitions we're talking about. These are all going to be mounted into the case using sliding dovetails. So I've gone ahead and prepared the stock. This cross piece here is the full depth of the cabinet, the 167 millimeters, minus 10 millimeters. Minus 10 millimeters, because I'm gonna put a 10 millimeter thick plywood back in the rear of the cabinet, and I want the edge of this to butt up against that rear. So this is 157 millimeters wide. Now I've now got the upright piece, which is this piece here, and this is going to sit 18 millimeters back from the front edge. Just a bit of a design feature. So that's at 157 minus 18 millimeters. And this is the piece that's going to make these two internal shelves here. And these are going to sit 18 millimeters back from that internal panel. So they are 157 minus 18 minus 18 millimeters. And I've not worried too much about the overall length of these just yet. I've just ripped them to width so they're ready to go. Now the information for sliding dovetails starts in chapter 16, which is page 59 of our brochure. And straight away you can see that we need this guide here attached to our fingers. This is that guide. It comes with the kit. It's that sort of H profile and it's that length. So we need that as part of this activity. So the procedure looks pretty simple. We start off by routing the female portion of the sliding dovetail and then we come back and route the male portion in two halves. So one side of the board, flip the board round and then on the other side of the board. The manual takes you all the way through setting things up and explaining what things are and we walk through that now on the video. And once again, it's using this E7 bush. Now I decided in the last video I didn't like the E7 bush very much, so I'm going to use our normal bush. So with that said, we're going to start off by marking up the material so we know where we need to cut this. So here's our box, and I now want to work out where I'm going to put this cross piece of wood, because that will dictate where I cut the sliding dovetails. Well, I know that the top part of the cabinet has got to take one of my eyewash bottles. So I want a little bit of room, so anywhere round about there for the top of my material is going to be good. So that would be a good place for my joint to go. So I'm going to measure up from the base of here and I want to find the centre-ish of that position. So the top of this internal partition is going to end at round about 117 millimetres from the end of my stock. So if I were to take 9 millimetres off that, 9 being half of 18, that should give me a good centre point position. So I can now make this 108, which is round about there. And now I can mark off that position like so. And that's the centre line where I want my sliding dovetail to be. I can now line up my two boards, making sure that this end here is flush and I can square that line across. And drawing your line like this across the two boards guarantees that that internal partition is going to be straight inside the cabinet. So that is good. We now need to put this black strip into the jig. You want to make sure that you've got fingers pretty much supporting the full distance of the jig. Don't worry about the spacing of this. Just sort of loosely 
distribute these fingers down the length. Something like that will do, so it's not precise. And now you can put your black piece in and it just simply clips in to these slots in the front of the fingers. And the reason that you've distributed these fingers is so this black piece is nicely supported throughout the length of the jig, like so. And just make sure that the lip here is nicely seated against all those fingers. If it's, if it's leaning forward like this in some way, shape or form, it will knock your router out as we are using it. So make sure it's all seated. And I say, the position of those fingers is just to support this, nothing else. We then need to set this up via a scrap piece of wood. So we just take a piece of wood and we'll arbitrarily just put a line down the middle of it like so. And then just continue that line that you've made round the front edge so you can see it, which is going to be there. And then you can position this into the jig and just clamp it down for the time being. Take a second scrap piece of wood. Neither of these have to be the same size as the ones that we're going to be using on the final project, but they do need to be the same thickness, 18 millimeters. And just insert that into the front clamp, making sure, again, it's hard against those outside references and it's butted up firmly against the top board and clamp that into position. Loosen the top one. Now you want to bring the line you've just made, that's going to be the centre point of our dovetail, to the outside surface here. So it looks a little bit like that. And then clamp it into position. Next thing is, loosen off the fingers. And just slide those back a little bit out of the way. Now here it's recommending that we're using a half inch shank on our router bit and that's because we're going to go through quite a lot of cross grain here. It does say an 8mm will do it but the recommendations is half inch. Then when you get down to section 16.4 it's asking us to use a number 128 which is a half inch shank at 14 degrees. Now the kit doesn't come with one of those interestingly enough. But it does come with the 8mm 128 bit. And you can see that's not going to be an unreasonable size for the material that we're using. So given this is softwood, and given it says we're okay with an 8mm shank, we are going to use this bit. It's also recommending that we use the e-bush, the E7 bush, because that allows us to fine tune the joints, but we know given our experiments so far, that gives inaccuracy. And it is saying here that we can use a standard 11.1 millimeter guide bush, and that's what we've already got fitted to the router, the one we bought to replace this, so we are in good shape. Now I'm not gonna fit this into the router just yet, because I want to center this router to this jig. And the easiest way of doing that is like this. Now if you remember on our Festool routers, it quite handily on the plate comes with a mark here and a mark here. And those marks are telling me that's the centre point of the router. So I now want to take my fingers and just place them down so they're flat on this top board and lock that into position. I'm also going to add our little foot, our support foot, on the side of my router. And remember, this one came with the guide for the router for using it on the Festool rails, but it gives us a lot of support at the front. So I can now rest my router on here and adjust my little foot so it's flat and supported and lock that down. Now my router is stable on the lead jig. I now want to put the outside of this bush against this black profile, like so. And I now want to line up the centre marks with this line here that we put on the material. And I'll do that by moving these fingers backwards and forwards until it's in position. And that's going to be about there. So I'm getting a reading of 8 on this scale. And there's no relevance on this scale to the position here. So don't rely on this, but instead do what I've just done and centre up your router. I now want to make sure that this black bar is square to this board. So leaving this end locked down, 
come in with a square and just check that black bar. Loosen this end off, nice and square, and that looks good to me. So I'm reading eight on that gauge there, and eight on that gauge there. So with a bit in place, my foot in place to secure this, and my router centered onto the line, I want to set the depth of cut of this of round about six millimeters. The reason I'm going for six millimeters is this is 18 millimeter pine, and I want the joint to be about a third of the material. 18 divided by three is six. It's not super critical, but it's going to be round about there. And now by eye, I can set the router bit to be that six millimeters-ish. Now in this situation, your dust extractor is not going to be much use to you because the material is overhanging at the front and it's going to catch on the black cowling at the bottom. So we're just going to add on the standard Festool dust extractor to give us a little bit of help. So now it's simply a matter of routing down through this board. And now you can see what we've got. We've got a sliding V-groove throughout that piece of wood. Now notice here that we got some tear out and that's understandable because obviously the bits going through here and it's unsupported fibers at the back are obviously going to blow out so when we come to do the joint in anger we'll clamp a scrap piece of wood on the outside of that and that will just stop that tear out happening but i fully expected that to happen also a little bit of fluff on the top of these probably the sign of not the world's best router bit once again so we'll just give that a very, very light sand to clean off those different bits. So now it's time to cut the male part of the dovetail. Coming in with a backer board, this board's got a slight bow in it, so I'm gonna clamp it across the grain to take that bow out. I've just bought a scrap piece of wood to the front here, and that's purely to align the back board with that material. And then clamp that into position. Now I can drop my finger assembly down on top of that board. Make sure it's all nice and smooth and flush. And just want to make sure those fingers are lying flat on that board and they are. And I'll bring in my scrap piece so it's resting underneath those fingers, like so. Now I'm going to adjust these fingers again. The instructions say, Adjust and set the finger assembly so it is clear that the routed tail will be too large for the slot. So let's have a look at that. Obviously this is a slot we're talking about. Now we want this routed tail to be too large for the slot. So these to end about there and these to end about there. Which is going to be there and there. So we'll take our board, we'll put it back in, right up to those fingers, like so. And I'm just eyeing up that router bit, and I want to move these fingers forward. Oh, crikey, probably about three or four millimeters. We'll try there, that's 12 and a half on that line, and we'll put this one on the same place. 12 and a half on that line. If anything, it could do it coming forward a little bit more. So we'll set this to lucky 13 there. And that looks good. So I've now moved these fingers forward so the bottom part of my dovetail cut should be slightly wider than the channel that we've already made. Now the instructions also tell us how to route this. It says route one side of the tailboard, make one light pass from right to left, climb routing, and making sure you control it firmly, and only the tip of the bit should be cutting the first cut. This back climb routing leaves a very clean shoulder in the side grain, and then it's telling us to move across and finish left to right, then flip the board round and repeat. What it means is if we cut directly in from this direction, from left to right, it's going to tear out this grain and give you a very ugly shoulder. 
If we come in from right to left, the climb cut, the router bits are going to be compressing these grains and that avoids the tear out and gives us a clean shoulder line. So we lightly come across in this direction and then go in and do the full cut. Let's give it a go. Now you can see by using that right to left technique how clean and tidy that shoulder line actually is. So now I'll come in here and go left to right to finish the depth of the cutoff. Turn the board round, back up to those fingers. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Repeat the activity. Now you can see that we've got these nice clean shoulder lines here, and we've got the profile of the dovetail that we're looking for. So now we just see if it fits, and hopefully this is too fat. And it is significantly too fat. I'm not sure we'll be able to, want to see this or not, but we need to bring this in by about that much there. And that much is around about three millimeters. So we can bring this in by one and a half millimeters because it's one and a half millimeters on each side. So we're currently set at it looks like 13. We're currently set at 13, so we'll bring this into, I would say, 12, just to be on the safe side, and we'll try that again. I don't need to make this step cut this time, because I've already got the clean shoulder line, so as long as everything's looking good, we can come in and make this cut. So now we can try this again. Ooh, and it's close now. It's close, but I think that half millimeter that we left off in that adjustment would have made this a perfect fit. So now we'll take this to bang on 11 and a half, which is going to be there. Now that's a nice fit in terms of tightness, but look at this gap I've got here and these gaps I've got here. It's almost as if this channel inside hasn't been smoothly routed. So I'm going to reposition this piece and then just reroute this channel to see whether that's the problem or not. It's either that or the top part of this scrap piece of wood isn't square. Now that's square, that's nice and square, so it must be this channel that's holding us off somewhere. Just going to clean this channel up, but before I do that, I want to make a note of this mark, because that's a perfect fit, 11 and a half, 11 and a half. So for the fit, it's 11.5 on the male side. And this time I'm going to throw in a backer board as well to see if we can avoid tear out and now we can just clamp that into position make sure everything is seated in terms of the fingers nice and flat and lock that down and lock that down my template's locked into eight and eight on both sides so we'll now go ahead and make this cut Now you can see the difference that's made from the tear out we had on this one to that nice pristine joint. So that simple backer board trick works really, really well. Once again, I've got those same small amount of fuzzies on top there that we just need to sand off. Still got that nice good fit we had before, which is excellent. Yes. 
and that looks a lot better. So there you go, that's a nice joint now. It's a nice fit, it's nice and tight and self-supporting, which is what we want on the joint. There's a little bit of tear out here on this edge that you can see. Now that's because I didn't protect this edge. So in the same way we used a backer board on this piece, we'll also use a backer board on this piece and that'll just present that, prevent that tear out. And I'll guarantee, yeah, if you look down inside here, you can also see tear out on this edge. So we will use a backer board for the tear out and then that is gonna make a really nice, tight joint, I think. So we're good to go. So with that done, we're now brave enough to go ahead and make the joints in our main assembly. So remember, we've already set up the center marks on our board, bringing my center line up to the end of my board like that. Sacrificial board next to it to avoid tear out. Make sure everything's lined up to these slight edges here. Make sure my front is nice and lined up to the edge of my front board, which it is, and clamp that into position. And this is it, we're gonna go in for the main box. Lie those flush. That's board one done. And now we have two joints that line up perfectly, which is exactly what we're looking for. Look at that, that's not bad, is it? So that's actually quite good. I know there's a lot of messing around in the setting up, but that's come out really well. You can always tell, you know, when your dovetails line up, get the edge of your board square, your dovetails line up all the way through, you've got real precision in your work there, and that's going to make a lovely joint. So lots of messing to set up, but by God, the results are good. So, with our dovetail sockets done, we now need to come and turn our attention to the male dovetails on this piece of board. I've already cut this down to width, so it's cross-cut um, to the right width, but it's not yet cut to the right length. So I need to work out the length I want. Now the length is going to be the distance between the inside sockets on the finger joints, plus whatever that depth is there on that joint. So this joint has come out at 8 millimetres. Now I was guessing for 6, so I guess 2 millimetres is okay. And this one is also 8 millimetres. Yep, yeah, so these are... Uh, yep, yeah, so they both got a depth of 8 millimetres all the way round. So my board needs to be 2, 2, 1 plus 16. So this distance here is 2, 2, 1 plus 16 and that equals 2, 3, 7. So I need to cut this board length here to 237 millimetres. Let's do that. And that should be 16 millimetres longer. We'll just check that. And that is indeed 16 millimetres longer. So we're good. So now we can just route on the ends. Excellent stuff. Job progressing. I'm going to use this piece of scrap as a backer board on here to prevent the tear out that we experienced before. But pretty much, apart from that, it's the same job. Now bring my fingers down, stop my backboard, lock those down, check that they are all flat, tick, and now I adjust this to that 11.5 figure that we found earlier on. Now this will be a good test to see how repeatable this is, because we've obviously moved these fingers now. Now I can come in with my main piece of wood and my backboard. Good, make sure everything's good, looking good and flush, everything's nice and square. If it's firm, 11 and a half, 11 and a half, and we're good to go. Once again, we'll come in and we'll do a cut from right to left, and then left to right. And there we have it. Everything's looking nice and clean, good edges. Not too bad at all, that. That should make a nice joint. So, moment of truth. So, if we are doing well,
this should fit in quite nicely. So there we go, so that's pretty much it. That's how you do sliding dovetails on a Lee jig. So that's it for this episode. They're through sliding dovetails on the Lee jig. More complicated than I expected it to be. Lots of messing around in the setup. Um, but yeah, the results are okay. So in the next episode, we're going to look at stopped sliding dovetails. And the good news is that once you've got this thing set up for this type of material, for that bush and for that bit combination, we don't need to set it up again. We just capture those two measurements 11.5 for the male and 8 for the female so we'll make a note of that somewhere and whenever we want to do that joint again we just set the jig to that and we're good to go so setting up is a sort of kind of one time deal i do want to look at a slightly different feature on the male version of the stopped sliding dovetail and i want to put a small haunch on the end of that just to finish things off and make it look tidy we'll look at that next time and get this thing glued up Hope you find it useful. See you soon.